Now he will have the opportunity to talk for about 10 minutes about the early days of Unix at UNSW. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm going to start with a bit of UNSW history. In the mid-1970s, the computer, computer science at UNSW was a small department within the School of Electrical Engineering. There were just six undergraduate computer science courses, each lasting 14 weeks. John Lyons taught 6.602B, the operating systems course. Almost all the university's computing resources were supplied and managed by the computer services unit. They had a very pretty pink IBM 36050 and a newly installed control data Cyber 72, viewed by many at the time as a supercomputer. Previously, program submissions for the IBM 360 required staff and students to go to the third floor of electrical engineering to lodge their card decks and retrieve their printouts. With the installation of the cyber, various schools within the university installed mini computers powered batch stations for job submission to the cyber. These were powered by deck or digital equipment PDP 1140s and allowed the users to do their own self-management of cards and printouts. This usually meant that half of them dropped their cards in the batch station. You had to help them pick them up. Um, it was a complete disaster, actually. Um, these CSU-controlled batch stations ran a, a deck operating system, actually RSX11, with an application, a, a user application, emulating a CDC user 200 remote terminal for submitting jobs to the cyber. The electrical engineering batch station was located on the second floor. The Department of Computer Science had a couple of small research computers which had very limited use. So basically, there wasn't any computers available for, generally for students or staff. So it was not like it is today with labs, with personal computers. There just weren't any computers for students to experiment on. The late Ken Robinson read the Ritchie and Thompson paper in the communications of the ACM, and he arranged the purchase of the Unix distribution from Western Electric. When it arrived, the mag tape held Unix edition five, which ran on the PDP 11.45. The, the computer services unit had a PDP 11.45 for maintenance and testing of the batch station software. After requests from the computer science department, the computer services unit granted after hours access to the 1145 for some people from the department. Three students, Ian Johnson, John Wainwright, and Greg James loaded the first tape, toggled in the bootstrap through the switches on the front console, and they hit the start switch, and Unix was then running at UNSW. Subsequently, the students, together with some professional staff, hatched a plan to migrate Unix to the second floor PDP-11 batch station. With the support of Murray Allen, the then head of, head of uh, department and luckily head of school at the time, and John Lyons and the professional staff with some retrobate students, they convinced the computer science unit, the computer services unit to allow Unix to be run on the electrical engineering batch station. The condition was that during the week, between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., staff and students should be able to submit card decks and retrieve printouts. The small group of unpaid postgraduate and undergraduates worked vacations, nights and weekends and undertook the task to build a, a batch station running Unix, emulating the user 200 remote batch terminal. They had to learn a lot about the system and pay special attention to performance. They needed help, but they couldn't get any. So the group generated its own expertise. Students and staff who previously had little access to computer equipment were sharing a mini computer. In fact, there were eight terminals on it. It was a tiny machine 
with a clock speed of just over one megahertz, and with an initial memory of about 128K, and disk storage of seven megabytes. Just compare that to the clock speed and memory in your mobile phone at the moment. Ian Johnson, who wrote the U200 emulator, it was an amazing piece of software. It rammed jobs into the cyber's input queue with results coming back from the cyber in minutes. Ian had studied the U200 protocol specification and figured out how to make jobs go to the front of the job queue in the for the cyber. As a result of the fast turnaround, staff across the university started coming to electrical engineering batch station to submit their jobs. The result was revolutionary. Within a few months, just about every batch station on campus was running Unix. <laughs> Unix was wonderfully plastic. We changed things to adapt them to the situation because it was a, a, a challenge and we were having lots and lots of fun. John Lyons recognised very early on the incredible enthusiasm of the team of students and started regular tea room meetings to discuss various changes and enhancements the team were making to the units kernel and utilities. This was ex very exciting for all of us. This later became the Australian units group and, um, and just around about that time, John decided to use Unix to teach operating systems. And of course, Unix is a multi-user operating system and he decided to use the Edition 6 um, in, in, um, in something for the undergraduate course. So they, he believed that the students should be able to grasp it within 14 weeks. The first time he tried this, he started handing out kernel source code files and, and then they would discuss these and it became clear the students needed all the code and an explanation of it to go, explanation to go with it and hence the commentary was born. John prepared the manuscript chapter by chapter and submitted it to the Unix tea room for comment. Some very interesting discussions I can tell you around that time. John used a Diablo daisy wheel printer with a nominal speed of 30 characters per second for manuscript production. This printer had a really bad habit of destroying carbon ribbons, which John had a lot of problems acquiring through the procurement group inside the electrical engineering. And there was many crossword about that particular printer. He also fought gallantly with NROF, the Unix text form in the utility to produce the final copies of the commentary and the code. For me, John was an inspiration. He was a kind and generous person who gave of himself and inspired a group of highly motivated students to build a deep knowledge and understanding of Unix, which allowed many to go on to rewarding, rewarding careers. John encouraged everyone, as we say in Australia, to have a go. I provided a brief history from my perspective of what occurred in the mid-70s at UNSW, describing an environment which contributed to John writing the commentary. The last 45 years for me have been built on what John and others at UNSW inspired me to do. I want to encourage the next generation of programmers to have a go, don't hold back, and have fun. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. Um, it's, yeah, th th thanks for letting us in in, in some of this um, history that happened uh, in this place and um, where actually I only found out years after I started here as a lecture <laughs> about what, what have been going on here before. <clears throat> 